instance, you caused a little bit of a stir recently on, I did. on, on that listserv, if I'm not mistaken, by asking a question about the validity of the subscription, the subscription model for, for journals. What's your take on that? Well, I'm, I, I cheated on that because, <laughs> uh, I cheated on that because um, next week I, I will be on an end phase workshop or program that's titled The Eroding Subscription Model. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me ask 3,800 people <laughs> what they think about that and see what comes back and see if it um, kind of changes my mindset about that whole environment. So that was the, that was the underlying motivator. But I still think it was a very, very good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess you're not going to be airing this before the 10th of November, right? So I can tell you what I think. Uh, or what I, today I think, okay. I'm going to think on the 10th of November. And uh, my title is going to be called The Fall and Rise of the Subscription Model. And that is taken from a wonderful is it BBC or ITV series about 30 years ago called The Fall and Rise of Reginald mm -hmm. Parent. You guys yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, Reggie well, Perrin. Reggie Perrin, yeah, Reggie Perrin, who got very bored and tired with his life, and one day went down to the beach, and each episode begins with somebody running to the beach at, at, at uh, accelerated speed, throwing off all of his clothes, mm -hmm. going into the water, and disappearing, right. right? Except that there were three different seasons or series of Reginald Perry, and in each case, uh, as he took on his new life, which he mm -hmm. found very, very interesting, he would, by the end, come back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to his wife whom he missed and to his community that he missed. And then the new series would begin with him getting a little bit, you know, and doing the same thing, which was repeated three times. So I think you're, you're, you're getting where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. I think we have... Uh, Nobody on the list has really talked about this, and it was just driving me—it's driving me crazy. But then maybe they won't. But nobody has talked about the fact that, well, it's, you know, the subscription model. You know, you pay a year in advance for your journal, and you get the journal and the indexing, the abstracting service, and whatever, whatever. Um, you know, while we may be seeing less of that, uh, what we're seeing as kind of. Um, adjuncts or replacements to that are really variations mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the subscription right. model. Whether it is that you're paying Biomed Central your annual membership fee, mm -hmm. and so your authors get a discount on their articles. Whether it's that you're not buying one journal, but you're buying whole packages of journals in the big deal. Um, whether it is that, um, now, I mean, think about this. Our libraries have been buying for the last few years big ebooks packages mm -hmm. from Wiley, Springer, Elsevier, mm -hmm. and all of that. We pay for those every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy databases one time, mm -hmm. and we often have an annual access fee, which we pay for every year. And if that doesn't feel to me like the fall and rise of Reginald mm -hmm. Perrin, <laughs> I don't know what does. Uh, one of the people that I really like and admire, Rick Anderson, um, you know, posted a message the other day saying that we're canceling $300,000 worth of mm -hmm. subscriptions. And so I wrote back on the list and said, yeah, but what are you going to do with that money? Are you going to just use it to prop up the subscriptions you already have? And he said, yes. <laughs> so, um, you know. Well, that was interesting because he, he was implying in his email message, I thought, that buying by subscription was a very inefficient way of purchasing mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. But I haven't heard a substitute proposed? Do you think mm -hmm. possibly open access, the various open access models that people are putting out there are possibilities? Or? Uh, I mean, soon to say. I mean, who knows? Pay-per-view, how much uptake yeah. is it getting in each of our different institutions? I would wager, you know, and we're all different sizes and right. shapes, I'd wager mm -hmm. not that much. Um, it, you know, buying by the chunk at discretion is, in theory, very useful and it's either a problem or it's, um, it's just a reality that we all need to be able to predict right. uh, where we spend mm -hmm. our money, right. how much of, we need, uh, of it we need, um, how we're going to do that. And the publishers also probably like to have some predictability in their lives. Yeah. So I think business models that make predictability um, possible will always be extraordinarily mm -hmm. important in at least the academic setting. Maybe not in the special library setting, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I just know yeah. academic libraries. I, I agree. I mean, I think 
that's the trouble with pay-per-view. That's you have to have you have to know what budget you're working within and know what what your budget mm -hmm. restrictions are. Well, um, and that's the beauty of the. The business model. likes stability. They like predictability. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not our job. Our job is, is providing materials for our users when they need it. Mm -hmm. and, if, and part of the subscription model with the perpetual rights, the 